Rejoice and be glad, for today the Lord has made. Amen. So let's see if we get this puppy gone. And we're going to go into Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Daniel interprets the dream. Okay. So Daniel and himself goes to the, the king, Nebuchadnezzar. Okay. So this is something that I've been using, this picture I've been using. I never said it would be easy, only said it would be worth it. In other words, fight the good fight, Paul t teaches us, uh, for one of the mysteries, which is the harpazo. Jesus is going to come in the clouds very quickly, uh, the way the uh, things are happening in the world and everything else. Uh, uh, rapture is under uh, a great intense that it, it doesn't exist, and uh, the church has replaced Israel, and all kinds of uh, replacements, theology and stuff out there. Our puzzle is real, but you, to see it, you have to see Paul the Apostle. And if you reject Paul the Apostle, as some do, then you're going to miss the revelation of Jesus Christ himself through Paul, because Paul has mysteries which were secrets that were hid, and only God the Father knew them. And until God gave them to Paul, they were hid. So once Paul got them, he gave them to us. Now they belong to us, okay? So here's the statue that the king had, and Daniel prophesied to the king, he's saying, okay, what you saw is you saw this great statue with the head of gold, which was you, the Babylon, okay? Then it had the arms and chest, which was of silver, which was, he turned to, comes as Persia. And then it had the, the, the midpoint, uh, the mid abdomen was brass, okay? So the brass was representing Alexander. Uh, I'm not going to say the great because anybody that wants to kill people to become Alexander uh, by through death and bloodshed isn't great. He's just a, a follower of, of uh, who comes to kill and destroy Lucifer. So Greece is the brass. Legs of iron, two of them. Okay. And then divided by uh, down and bottom, the feet of iron and clay. Okay. So the feet have ten toes. And the ten toes will be important because I see them as the ten crowns, which is on the beast, also that we see in Revelation having ten uh, crowns on the beast, okay? But what happened was I, I saw this, and I had a, a vision. The two legs, to me, became two capitals. Uh, Rome is on one leg. Constantinople, now in symbol, is the other. But as I looked again, still on it, uh, the two legs then became uh, two religions. On the west, it became Christianity. On the east, it became uh, Islam. And I looked again, and then it became two two sons. On the west, it became Isaac, or Judaism. And on the west, or the east, I should say, Ishmael. Okay? So I, to me, the dream, when I saw the dream, then I went down and, and had another one with my own foot. And uh, we'll get there in just a second now. So Abraham gave birth to two faiths, is what I saw. Like I said, the, the east was for Islam and the west for Christianity, okay? It began in, in Genesis 16 when Yahweh uh, made his covenant with Abraham, son Isaac, okay? And in essence, sent uh, the half-brother Ishmael on his merry way to become a great nation. Okay, the, the present-day Arabs, most of whom are Muslim. In Genesis 16, 13 through 16, years before Abraham's second son Isaac was, was born, the angel of the Lord told Abraham's servant Hagar, the wife of, uh, a midwife of uh, Abraham, that her son Ishmael would be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone, and everyone's hand will be against him. And he will live to the east of all his brothers. And that's where you have uh, Iran today. You have Iraq and everything else. And uh, Genesis 17, 18, and Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. But God said, No, but Sarah, your wife, will bear you a son and shall call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I will bless him and will make him fruitful and multiply him exceedingly. He shall become the father of twelve princes, and I will make him a great nation, but my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you at this season next year. In other words, Abraham was told to go into his wife, Sarah, and conceive a son whom he would have a covenant with. Instead, Sarah said to him, I'm 99 years old, go to the midwife. 
So like Genesis uh, with uh, the Garden of Eden and Eve taking and eating the fruit and not obeying God, she disobeyed God as well and sent him to go to Hagar. So Hagar is uh, gives uh, Abraham a son who by uh, the customs of the thing, firstborn male is the mantle. He gets the, the inheritance of the father, which was Abraham. But that's not what God said. See, God says, no, Sarah, your wife, will bear your son. The covenant with, I will establish is with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you. So Sarah did not do what God wanted, just like uh, Eve did not do. And so the, everything that's going on today is because of disobedience. We are constantly uh, disobeying God. So so what happens then is now Sarah saw her son Hagar of Egyptian, whom she had born to Abraham mocking. Okay? tells us that Ishmael had been born according to the flesh, while Isaac had been born according to the promise. I'm, Isaac replaced Ishmael as the favorite son and heir. This, is, of course, made Ishmael jealous and bitter. As a result, he mocked and disdained his half-brother. Eventually, the situation became so intolerable, Abraham's wife Sarah demanded that Ishmael and his Egyptian concubine mother Hagar be expelled permanently from Abraham's father. Okay? And that's what you have today. You have Isaac, one father, Abraham, both to the Jew and the Arab. And the conflict between the two of them is, is terrible because it goes back, as I, as I sit here, I was thinking about this, from Ishmael comes Islam, it seems like, like Ishmael. Islam, because it's like Islam. And it's kind of like some of the word, letters are there. Or is that uh, the Lamb of Blood for Passover? Because she was the Egyptian during the Passover and she came out with Abraham. Isaac gives birth to Jacob, whom God changes his name. Ah, sorry about that. The mouse's little thing is messing up on me. Uh, uh, gives birth to Jacob, who God changes his name to uh, Israel. Both children are born of the same father. Yet, as with the children of Adam, Cain and Abel, there was jealousy between them, and Cain rose up and killed Abel. Okay, so it appears we're again seeing family fighting with Ishmael rising up, Arab, the Hezbollah and all everything else, to kill his brother born unto Isaac Jacob. So this is what I said when I got down to the feet of that statue. This, the feet of the statue says that we see it in another where the ten heads of the beast come down having seven heads and ten crowns, is that it has uh, uh, ten crowns. Well, the, if you look at the statue of Nebuchadnezzar, the, the, the head of gold gets down to the two feet. Well, the heel of the foot could be, is what I'm saying, is this talking about the, the harpazo, the rapture. Heel, heel, the foot, heel, H-E-E, -E, heel, heel, being Yeshua, our Lord, will tell the archangel to give the shout, come up hither for the marriage supper of the land. So, hill goes into what? Well, what's in front of the heel of the foot? It's called the arch of the foot. So, this is the arch of the foot where it matches the one who will shout, the, come up hither. Or archangel coming with Yeshua in the clouds to gather unto himself his bride or church of believers for the marriage supper of the Lamb in heaven. Okay, here is that time before the final fifth kingdom begins with ten regions. So you see there could be between the toes and this ball right here on the foot. It could be, you could say this area in here could be the gap between the arch and the harpazel to the gap before what? The new world order is what I'm seeing was, was shown to me. This is the final kingdom spoken of by Daniel in the dream of ten region world. Ten region world having ten regional dictators who will rule with fear over the people and force all to receive the name, mark, or number of the beast to live for all who re refuse are beheaded. We've seen, uh, we've seen the, the guillotines already in the, the FEMA can set up for when this new world order openly comes into the world show finally who the Antichrist is. That will, because once the church is gone here, just before this gap, uh, the church as we see in, in uh, Daniel 
927, that the restrainer is removed, there is a departure, not a falling away of the faith, but a physical departure. The, ch the church is taken out. Jacob Starl begins after, a, perhaps, right here with a, I'm sorry, with a little gap. Then the ten regions of the world are set up with ten rulers who will rule with the Antichrist, setting up his system, the beast system, and that whosoever does not have the name, mark, or number should be uh, arrested and beheaded. Okay? And this is what I, I found one of this. George H.W. Bush started the New World Order. His father, Prescott Bush, during World War II, was arrested for war crimes, helping Hitler. Okay? The whole entire Bush family is uh, uh, Nazi. Uh, uh, George Hubert Walker Bush was head of the CIA when uh, Kennedy was assassinated. And Kennedy wanted the CIA gone. Why? Because uh, the Nazis under Galen, SS Gestapo, became part of the OSS, which was renamed the Central Intelligence Agency. So the New World Order has been planned. Look on the back of your dollar. This symbol of the pyramid with the all-seeing eye, the Illuminati, has been in constant uh, control in the uh, shadow government, working for uh, the, the day when the... the uh, Restrainer gets out of the way, which is probably the uh, body of Christ, which is the believers who have accepted Jesus Christ. We are in uh, the one body, which uh, Paul uh, teaches us. And uh, when that body in Revelation 12 sign is uh, given birth on 923, we could very, uh, um, we could uh, at that point be raptured out and taken up. But you notice they, they were already making plans in this coin. Either it was real or, or, or just a graphic, but it makes the point of the ten toes, which are uh, Nebuchadnezzar's, which was shown to me. Okay, so the Gospel of Paul. This is our faith today. So 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which you also are saved, ye be keep in memory of what I preached unto you, and that you have believed in vain. Okay. For I delivered unto you first of all, which I also received. So Paul received this first, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. In other words, he was, he was nailed to a cross, shed his blood for our sins, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay. If you believe this, if you understand, have faith to believe that Jesus Christ went to the cross for you, just as he did for me, that he was buried and rose again, then it is faith plus nothing. We are not by works uh, uh, able to give our salvation. Seventh-day Adventist Roman Church saying that you've got to uh, be born again and have to do uh, works for salvation or you'll lose it is a lie. Okay, it's a straight-out lie. Either you believe in the blood of Jesus Christ, that it's, uh, it's uh, virtue and it's righteousness, cleanses you and washes the, the, the sins from you, or the blood is, is useless. And therefore, you alone, which is going back to the garden, saying you can be as God. I mean, it's a lie. So don't take the lie. Stand on the scripture. This is what Paul's teaching. This is what the revelation of Jesus Christ gave, was that Jesus Christ said, I went to the cross for you. It's my work. My work was to save you. All you have to do not be rocket science. Just sit there and believe with faith that I did it and open your heart and then receive me. Okay? Receive me from what? The sinner's prayer. Believing on the foundation of 1 Corinthians 15, the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel. Because faith comes from hearing the gospel. And from hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ comes faith. Therefore, this faith that we have, the faith that I have today, is the faith of Christ in me. Because he comes into me. That I can then for now that I know the gospel. I can now ask. I can call upon him to come. Because I have the gospel. I know the truth of the gospel. I, I can understand that he, he took my place. So then I can say heavenly father. I come to you in prayer asking for the forgiveness of my sins. I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart. That Yeshua Jesus is your son. And that he died on the cross at Calvary. That I might be forgiven. And have eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. Father, I believe that Yeshua, Jesus, rose from the dead. And I ask you right now, come into my life. Be my personal Lord and Savior. 
I repent of my sins and worship you all the days of my life because your word is true. Okay, I confess with my mouth that I am born again, cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's the blood that takes the sins away. What do I put down there to tell someone? I will put this as a link of, uh, to the salvation page on my on my website. Yeshua's house of prayer everlasting. His house is a house of prayer. Okay. And there we go. So, this is what I said. The, the dream that I had was of Nebuchadnezzar. The two legs became two cities. Uh, Rome and Constantinople. Then they became two uh, faiths. The Christianity and Islam. And then they became two sons. Isaac and Ishmael. And uh, that's what I see with the two. Going down to the two feet. With the heel. Heel being Christ. Will come and speak to the arch. Which is on the, in front of the, the heel of the foot. Being the archangel. Who will give the shout. And we'll get to that ball up there on the front. Just before the ten toes. When the new kingdom comes in and the heart positive takes place. So I hope that this uh, uh, little dream that I had and the explanation that, he, that God gave to me through the Holy Spirit uh, helps glorify and edify that uh, even in the dreams of Nebuchadnezzar, uh, there was a, a, uh, uh, words there that God was saying of a future heart positive, the rapture of the church just before the ten kings are set up to rule in that final fifth age. Okay? So, Maranatha, and uh, may the, the peace and the glory of God be with you. Amen.